Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Now, many, many years ago, when I was a youngster, well, that was a long time ago, there was something called particle saturation. It was a technique not really employed much nowadays. I think a few guys probably, the old school guys still know it works. It meant the introduction of lots of tiny little particles of bait, small baits, that would get those fish feeding, get them zoned in totally onto that particular bait, and they would throw all caution to the wind. And then, hopefully, you got a slamming take because they moved off confidently. It was primarily used for carp. So, what are we going to do for particle saturation? Let's get out on the water. And that particle bait I'm going to be using are these. You know it's going to be cheap, don't you? Supermarket Sultanas. Fold the label over because they don't give me any money to mention who they are. Just call Everyday Value Sultanas. They give you 500 grams, which is a lot of Sultanas, but they are the perfect. Oh God, I got one out already. They are the perfect size for particle fishing. 500 grams for, at the time of filming, 84 pence. 84 pence. I shouldn't think there's anything in a tackle shop that's 84 pence, I don't know. But look, this is what I'm going to be having a little short experiment here at Watmore Farm. I've put my base of ground bait down. i put a base of ground bait there. I'm margin fishing. <laughs> I can't tell you how close. Well, I'm so close here, I've set myself back from the edge and lowered the rod top over the side of the uh, platform here, the swim, and I want to get really close. I thought I might be able to get you some fish feed in there or just get an idea of what it looks like in the swim sort of two feet down it's no more than about two feet deep so very very shallow and i've set my whole range up back it's been a shock i've been raining it is this is the time totally awesome go fishing 25 past three and i've been there 10 minutes 15 minutes i've already made a big mistake i put my sloppy ground bait in that bailey's horse feed i thought i'd film underwater first just to show you the ground bait on the bottom just screwing the little underwater camera together and I lean over and this mirror-like calm just just rocks like this. Now I know from experience that's a carp, decent sized carp that's already on the ground bait and the uh, sultanas are thrown in there. So I'm going to be very careful. I think I'll try and show you before more rain comes what the swim looks like close in here. I've got one out here on the left on a link ledger, both on Avon rods, no quiver tips this time, just straight Avon rods. Honestly, God, I've had no beeps on the right hand close in suicide one, the point blank carp one. The left hand one just on the edge of the margin, the rush in there, rushes there. Yes, I've had loads of tweaks and beeps, so I feel the small roach are on these sultanas already. In fact, I can see roach. Do you know what these are going to be really good for, guys? Float. That's a big tackle box. Roach fishing with a float and carp fishing loose feeding, like they do the pellet regular. Anyway, scatter a few more in carefully, and I will show you this swim close in underwater. Guys, I've got to sit down. An absolutely animal carp came up. I was putting this down, looking at the little roach there, and the next thing I know, this gargantuan carp was in here. I can't tell you, six inches from the bank, digging over the sultanas. How this rod hasn't gone off, I don't know. I don't know how he has a slammed in the line. If he comes in again, I would so like you to see it underwater. I've no idea if it's going to come out or not. I don't even know if I switch the camera off. It's probably still running. I've got to try, this is just why I go fishing, point blank fish of a car. I absolutely love it. He is definitely going to come back. It's like a mirror, there's not a breath of wind. It's sort of heavy, rain laden air, and I think that's good conditions. I just hope they go nuts and get this particle preoccupation. If he gets his head down on those sultanas, pop, 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 he's going to forget. Jesus Christ. Man, is it going to be a good session? I hope so. I'm only here for three hours. I've got to get that picture of that fish. Up. That is a big carp. Guys, I'm trying to put a bobbin on. He's here. He's here. He's right in the swimmer. I can just see the ripples. Come on, come on, come on. I'll see if I can get him. He's right in there. I'll probably spook him. Oh, look at the ripples. Look at the ripples, guys. Can you see those ripples in there? I'm going to zoom in. Look, that movement, that is a fish with his tail coming up and his head on the bottom. I mean, it's a decent sized fish. I'd say, I'd say it's very, very close to, if not well into a double. I'm either going to have to try and catch him because he's stirred up so much down there, I've got no clarity for this camera. 
this is the sort of action you can get particle preoccupation. Once they get their heads down on these, there's loads and loads of little things, they're going pop, 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 pop. It's like kids with Smarties, pop, pop, pop. Well, not popping those type of things, popping Smarties. Then they throw all caution to the wind. Take a risk here, guys. I'm gonna put the big camera here. Oh, there he is, he's down there. I've just seen him go through. I'm gonna chuck some raisins in. Man, he must love them because they're so sweet. This is where I'm fishing, look. Watch the raisins go in. Right, now what I'm gonna do is bring the camera up, because he's gonna stir it up when he starts digging again. Of course, I'm seeing him with polarizing glasses. You might not see them without the uh, polarizing glasses. Oh, there he is, I can see him going across. They've stirred it up, so I think there's two down there. They stirred it up so much that I doubt you'll see them. There he is, I see him. I'm gonna go free shoot this if I can. Let's take him off the tripod. There he is, there he is. Double figure fish. Double figure fish, guys. What I'm gonna do, guys, I've got that one little BB shot on that close in one. I haven't even cast the other rod out. I got so tied up with trying to film this fish for you. I'm actually, I'll put a load more sultanas in, sultanas in there for you. I'm going to free line it totally down the side by the wood pilings because I've seen him come in and he feeds here and he goes almost body touching the side of the piling. So I, that's how close he's coming, he's almost touching it. I feel if I lower it down, there's going to be a kamikaze take and I think the, ro well, the rod's going to come out of rest. Probably have to throw this other one out to the side as well. <laughs> they're both there, they're both doubles, they're both commons. Here he goes, oh, oh my God, look at, the, look at the hump in the water. Now that's, look at the swirl down there, and look at my rod top, I don't know if you can still see it. It's absolutely, it's still shaking. So am I. That was a liner. They're quite spooky. Even though they're feeding hard, they're coming in, and I, I probably need a bucket full of sultanas to, to retain them. This is where they get preoccupied in munching them. Plus the roach are going on them as well, I can see those down there. So I've now mixed the sultanas in with the ground bait because there's so many small fish in there, they must love that sweetness, that they are absolutely demolishing all the ground bait. And I think they're picking up the sultanas and taking them off and shaking them because I see a lot of flashing going on down there. So I'm now making up little balls like this, which obviously, any of you have watched our potatoes film, if you've ever watched that one, Carp on Potatoes, this is about size. It's handy for feed, but it's also handy because a big 10, 15 pound carp will pick that up and march off with it in one, one big mouthful. So I'm really piling up quite a bit. Obviously I haven't bought enough bait, I can see that. They're demolishing me. But I will get one in a minute. Right. It's gone very mucky and humid, and yes, we got a fish on. Don't think it's one of those bigger ones. But listen, they all count, don't they? that a little bit more confidence further around the corner. Yeah, he's not a big fish, but it's quite a nice one. Nice looker, if he doesn't bury in there. But... Mr. Sultana. Let's get him on the map. Well, fish is very nice carp. Well, if you lay still, he's one of those. It's a sort of naughty day. Have you ever had those? No, no. Now wait for the camera. Don't get caught on the net. There you go. Nice carp, guys. Just waiting for that suicide bar to go off. What a scrapper. Do you know what? I know I just haven't bought enough bait with me. They're eating everything as fast. I'm pretty well putting it in there. That's what preoccupation does. It gets them. 
on the bite. And on the bite, the fish did come. Close in, right down by the side of the pilings, the support for the front there, where I put those sultanas in. Eventually, the rod GS buckled over. Do you know, I didn't even, I don't even remember the buzzer going off, it was just single tone, and the bobbin must have just slammed into the, uh, into the rod blank itself. It was just straight up running, and luckily I'd back the drag off a little bit, just in case something bizarre happened. And this fish is a totally different animal than the last one. Much more powerful on the Avon rod, stripping line out. But when you're playing fish, we often get asked quite a few times, how do you play a fish? Well, we'll have to do a video about it, I think, because some people will leave a constant drag. I like to play with it. I might be up or down. I might go into back wind so that I can use the anti-reverse either on or off. I'm moving around all the time as the situation demands and as the size of the fish demands. But you, you've got to basically be able to put as much pressure as you can into the rod blank, obviously without breaking the line, but when that fish wants to go, once they get into a certain size and they're not three or four or five pounders, then on an Avon rod, you're going to have to respect that fish's power. Even now you can see that fish has that much power. I was just a little bit too keen with the net and the fish was still a little bit too powerful for me. But if you use like the back wind or the reels drag, just tie the fish out carefully, don't bust that line and pressure it as much as you dare. Eventually you should wear it out. But boy, this fish was really giving me a scrap. Here we go, a long last hit in the net. Success in every totally awesome packet, and this is no small carp. Really nice common, undoubtedly, that was a kitty that was up underneath the bank there, shoveling down my sultanas as fast as it could go. Well guys, I told you that was a good common that came in close, and I got him, what an epic scrap. He's, I knew it was a double. 12 pounds, four ounces. Very nice on sultanas. Now let me show you to you before I pop him back. Because there were two of them. This is a nice big paddle of a tail with this one. Yes, look at that one. A chunk. That was worth not getting out of bed for. That was worth going to the supermarket for, I know. I knew there was at least two doubles in there because you know, I could see them caught in a fish. Lovely, and look how thick he is across the back. Unbelievable. Let's get it back. Sultana's rule. Well, it's always nice to get a good double figure fish like that. Probably go a little bit quiet now, but you never know. But that's what I found is mixing the Sultana's in with the ground bait. I think it just makes it bite one again. Oh, it's not a carp this time. Makes it bind together a bit, a bit more as a small carp. Oh, well, there you go. It's something different. Here's something different. I'll tell you what's not a bad one. You should be netting that, Graham. You should be netting it. It is. And this place here at Watmore, I suppose, has some nice roach in it. And there is a reasonable sized roach on a single sultana and a very big carp hook. Is that not weird? Nice roach, huh? Well, it wasn't long before that rod was in a battle bend again, and the old Avon blank was bent double. Fish powering across to the right to get under the bushes, and then it would turn, run out, and try and get me in those rush beds or reed beds on the left. You've got to keep on your toes. Sometimes you have to lock down and hold them. Sometimes you just can't, and you've got to lose line, or you're going to bust the line. Constant pressure got me the fish, really nice looking mirror, not as big as the last one, but showed Sultana's worked. Well there we go guys, another one, this one was free lining, just felt like touch ledgering, nothing except the three Sultanas on the hook, and he took it on the drop. What a great way to fish. I can see, after this success, I'm going to have to try float fishing with a single Sultana, but that will be another trip. Great session this one.
That's not good, is it? Started raining, guys. It's as black as you could want, and I'm still looking cool because I'm wearing a Polaroid. But if that big thing comes over this way, it could be brown trouser time. Should have packed up early. I knew I should have packed up early, but that last carp did it, made me stay, and then I was stuck. Oh well. A bolt of lightning hits me. Let's hope it doesn't hit the camera. <laughs>